In today's video, we're gonna be talking about drum triggers. Now, a few things we're gonna go over are the different types of triggers, how to set up your drum set for them, and some best practices so you can achieve best results for you. Let's get into it. All right, so what are drum triggers? Basically, it's a little sensor that either goes under your pedal board or attaches and mounts to your kick drum so that every time you hit it, it sends a signal out the other end and into a brain that we drummers like to call a drum module. If you're not familiar why we use these, it's because a lot of metal drummers that play live or even in studio play some really articulate stuff, whether it's double strokes or single strokes, and we find it really difficult to cut through a really dense mix of guitars, so that's why we like to use triggers live especially. And in the studio, you can use a couple different tricks using triggers, and I'll show you that as well. This version of a drum trigger is called the foot blaster. Now this goes under your bass pedal. Every time you hit down on the bass pedal, it sends a signal through this pickup so to speak, and then out this quarter inch jack. When you're triggering an acoustic drum set, there's a few things you wanna keep in mind. I'm gonna show you a couple best practices here to get you on your trigger happy way. So let's go to the kick drum here. Now you notice I got a kick drum mic in here. I still use that, but I like to blend a trigger sound with my kick drum mic sound. But what I really wanted to show you was what's inside the kick drum. Stuffed in here is just a bunch of old blankets and basically what we're trying to do is deaden the batter drum side so that you don't get any missed triggering. Now on this side you can see that the skins are actually touching right up against the batter skin. Another thing you wanna keep in mind too is that you're gonna to wanna to tighten this up quite a bit. You wanna tighten your batter skin so it's almost tabletop tight. Now the reason for that is so that you get proper strokes and you get a proper trigger over to your base mounted acoustic trigger. This is the foot blaster version I was showing you guys earlier. So you can actually just bend this little tab here according to what footboard height you're using so that every time it hits, it sends a proper signal. Now what's really handy with these things is that if you're playing on stage and there's a bunch of low end rumbling happening, you won't get double triggers. Now, if you do mistakenly hit this, obviously it will go off, but you can adjust it accordingly so that you have your sweet spot dialed right in. In my current setup, I'm using the Roland RTK30, or RT30K, I believe it is. Basically, it's a surface mount version of an acoustic trigger, and it just locks on to the rim of the drum right here, and you just screw this on. Next, I'll show you how it's routed and how do you can get this thing up and running. So what you're gonna wanna do is get a quarter inch cable so you have this to plug into your drum module. So basically that goes from there all the way into your drum module over here. Just in case it wasn't obvious, if you do rock the two kick drums and you're obviously gonna need two, but thankfully the Roland TM2 drum module can accommodate the two inputs. So let's go over to that thing and I'll show you exactly how I have it all patched in. And that way I can show you how you're actually able to listen back to what you're playing. This is the Roland TM2 drum module. It's a standard for most drummers who are triggering the kick drums. That line that was coming out of that trigger is actually going into trigger input one. So left and right is just being triggered by one individual input. What's cool about this system is that it has a headphone out. So out goes the eighth inch jack and then it actually goes in here into my little mixer so that volumes can be adjusted according to the track levels that are coming through the other channel. Now there are a bunch of different settings that I can go through in here and show you, but I do have another video and I'll link that above in a card so you can go and check it out for yourself. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that at least once a month somebody emails me asking for drum samples, so it's your lucky day there's going to be an included download link in the description below of this video so that you can get yourself started. Now, unfortunately, you do need to invest a little bit of money into this, but if you're serious about triggering, this setup is ultimately where you'd like to be. Anything else might kind of give you some trouble, but I'd highly suggest getting a roll-in trigger or an on trigger or a foot blaster and put it into a TM2. As far as settings are concerned, if you're going to go with the Roland TM2, it does come with an instruction booklet and I do really advise you to go through that to figure out what each function actually does. So because you are different than I am, my settings will not necessarily reflect how your settings will be on your TM2. If you wanna trigger your stuff, that is the equipment that I suggest for you to get 
If you don't have enough money or it's not in your budget for that, then I suggest saving up your pennies and then you can work towards getting that complete setup. If you wanna learn more about drum triggering, just drop a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you have any further topics that you'd like to discuss or for me to create a video on, please do let me know and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.